Hello, welcome to Oak Ridge's Virtual Connections Space for Conversations podcast. My name's Steve Munro, and in this episode, we're talking to my colleague Mark Crabtree about the topic of how do you build resilience when undergoing significant change at work and home? It's a subject that's probably on all our minds at the minute as we move our way through uh, COVID into the period post-COVID. So I'd like you to sit back for the next 20 or 30 minutes or so while we unpack this incredibly important subject, give you some very practical ideas and suggestions that you can implement almost immediately. So let's get started. Welcome, Mark. Thank you very much, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and um, I think we find you in Steve Cram country, is that right? Up in the sunny northeast? Yeah, um, I think Steve is from Sunderland. Um, I live just outside of Newcastle, so I think we've got to be careful how we position that, I think. Yeah, so, you're definitely in the Great North Run Territory, aren't you? I think it's done. I am in the Great North Run Territory, yeah, that's Fan- right. Fantastic. So, um, Mark, I'm delighted to talk to you about, uh, about this uh, important subject, but before we just jump in, can you just give me a quick potted history about you know, how you've ended up on a podcast talking about resilience? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I, I'm from Leeds originally. I went to university in the Northeast, decided to stay up here, met my wife up here, um, and, and fell into the world of organization development and learning and development. And I, I've worked um, for what was then the Burton Group, um, Arcadia, I think it's called now. Um, worked um, in a senior position at Newcastle City Council, and then for a large motor dealer group. And then until October 2018, um, I was assistant HR director at Durham University with wow. responsibility for organization development and leadership and de- leadership development. And, and part of my role really was supporting managers and teams and individuals through transformational change. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe that lots of organizations are pretty good at change in the sense that they know where they are and where they want to be. But it's helping people think about that psychological journey that they go through yeah and then I went through a change myself um, it came to October 2018 um, I was made redundant and then decided to thought to, to really think about my future mm-hmm. and um, started up my own consultancy and I became part of the Oak Ridge family um, early in 2019 um, but my specialism is about change and transformation and helping people be the best they possibly can be uh, so it's a fantastic uh, ex- bank of experience there, Mark. You know, some really interesting industries and and uh, to work in through that period. Um, yeah, yeah. I, that's fantastic. Um, so I'm interested. What, what is it gets you out of bed in the morning? And so what is it the real sort of mm, for Mark? Um, I think there's a number of things. It is one. Um, I want, maybe I shouldn't say this in today's days of COVID, but I want to make fantastic and excellent performance infectious. Um, And that means helping people be the best they possibly can be. Um, And for me, it's about helping people imagine a new future and energizing them and empowering them to get there and go beyond. So it's wanting people to be the best versions of themselves they can be. And I try and do that through conversations or through coaching or through facilitation and the kind of work that I enjoy doing. So, So that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. Fantastic. And um, what attracted you to, to Oak Ridge? Because like me, I could have chosen any number of consultancies to do my work through. What, why, what about the Oak Ridge tribe? What makes it? Um, it's very much like a family. Uh, and, and I think, you know, one thing that I, I've really appreciated right from the, from the outset, really, is that sense of community. And I think it's a very strong sense of community where you can bring in ideas you can be supportively challenged you can play um you can have fun but there's always a sense of purpose behind it and that sense of purpose is about helping other people helping organizations grow and i do like that kind of family community that family feel of it and you know i've I've met most people just virtually um, but i feel like i know them really well and I've known them for a long time, which I think is a, is a really good thing. Uh, that's brilliant. I, I, I think you're right. I think it's, uh, it's people and performance that links most of us together, actually. And, Absolutely. And some of the values uh, that I think Oak Ridge displays are, are exemplary. I think 
we truly do live our values and and we'll talk about that perhaps on another podcast for another day. Um, Mark, I'd love to start unpacking this subject um, because, as we know, COVID-19 is, put, is um, I think Simon Sinek said this uh, in a recent um, podcast that I was listening to about him. He said, this crisis is the great revealer. It kind of like puts us under some pressure and it also reveals how resilient organizations are. And we are as individuals, I think it kind of tests that resilience. So it'd be good to unpack it. Um, so customers are asking us things like, why do you think resilience is more important than ever? Or, and what simple steps can we take to support our people? So let's start at the beginning. What, what do you see resilience as? What is resilience? Okay, I, I think there's a, there's a need now to think of resilience from a different perspective. Um, a lot of times in the past, people have talked about resilience as bouncing back. Okay. Um, you know, people talk about bounce back ability, you know, and the ability to pick yourself and dust yourself down and get on with things. And I was talking to, to somebody the other day who used the imagery of a lighthouse on a rock and that kind of solid feeling or a boy being tethered to the ocean um, floor about riding with the waves. And I think that's all really, really positive stuff. But I think resilience now has to be not just about bouncing back, but about bouncing forward. Okay. That sounds and about using that kind of energy and enthusiasm with a sense of purpose to bounce forward. And, and the image that I've got in my head is, is not a lighthouse or a boy in the sea. It's like those Super Bowls we used to have when we were a kid yeah. that we used to throw down and they used to bounce higher and higher and move forward. And, and for me, that's what resilience is about. It's about bouncing, bouncing higher, mm. but also bouncing forward. So it's very much about forward movement. And that's what I think is important about resilience, especially in this COVID, post-COVID world we find ourselves in. That's a really uh, nice analogy, that, that bouncing ball. I remember those as a kid. Used to lose a lot, and they used to hurt. Uh, absolutely. You threw yeah. them there as well. Um, but it implies that there's something uh, special about the material that contains in that Super Bowl. And I was thinking about the conversation we had with Lisa recently around mental health and well-being, which is obviously mm -hmm. a part of resilience. And she was talking about the, uh, the stress bucket or a stress container. And, you know, when pressure goes in, that releasing that pressure is, is a key part to that. Now, I'm just wondering then, is resilience a finite thing or is it an expandable thing? Or, you know, do you just have as a person just got so much of it and when it's used up, it's used up? No, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, an expandable thing. I think it's something that you develop and you can grow. Um, I like to use a lot of analogies in the kind of work that I do. Uh, and one thing that I've been doing since lockdown is I've been dabbling with yoga. <laughs> and, 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 and suddenly I realized how unsubtle subtle I was, you know, and, and how... I ate and doing things like that. But I, I think by practicing and by continuing, I've become a little bit more flexible in the way that I, I do my yoga. I'm, I'm by no means, a, you know, good at it. I, I probably look awful doing, doing yoga, but it's about practice and about becoming more um, subtle, becoming more able to move and to flex. And I think resilience is very similar to that. You know, you've got to practice it. You've got to keep going but it's not a finite thing. If you keep exercising it, you become even more resilient, even more subtle and even more able to move. So I think it's very much about, you know, we've, we've got endless bounds of resilience as long as we keep, keep going at it. I think that, that's important from my perspective. Yeah, so I, I've, I've joined you in the Pilates stakes as well. Uh, yeah. Lockdown has been going on. I can tell you my lower back isn't as uh, flexible as I'd like it to be. <laughs> yeah. So that. I'm interested in that because um, there's a couple of things in there that uh, can take us forward, I think, into the next piece. Because uh, resilience could also be thought of as mental toughness or that ability to um, respond in the face of adversity. So I'm just wondering, are there some simple things that we could talk about for an individual to think about of getting better at resilience then, if it is a flexible thing, it's an organic thing? Yeah, um, I, I think there is. I think there's, there's lots of things that we can do to think about, about resilience. And if you look at a lot of the research 
and you look at a lot of the writing about resilience. Um, and there was somebody called Susanna Cabasa who was talking about hardiness you know, back in the early 80s. Yeah. Um, it, it's very much about um, taking control. It's very much about seeing it as a challenge. It's very much about having a commitment. Um, and also, I think it's also about having the confidence of, of taking that forward. So if you look at those kind of four core areas, and, and part of it is changing the narrative in your head is part of resilience. It's about having this kind of optimistic view, optimistic style, seeing something as a challenge to rise to rather than something that holds you back. Mm, right. So it's about having that, seeing that as a, as a challenge. And is, um, I also, sorry? I was going to say, is, opt is this optimism thing the same as positive thinking or is it different? Because you could do that kind of classic optimistic fool thing, you know, which is about ignoring reality. Yeah, I, I think it's about having a sense of purpose as well. I mean, I think you can have be an optimistic fool, but I think it's also being reflective as well. And part of that is about understanding yourself, understanding your strengths, understanding your development needs but also having a sense of purpose and a commitment to it. Yeah. So, you know, I think this kind of optimism is important, but it's got to be grounded in some kind of reality and that reality comes from, from reflection. And I think it's also about taking a, a, a real perspective of things and looking at things in, in, a, in a way that helps keep you grounded and keeps it real for you. So I think that that's important. Yeah. And I think also when you're looking at resilience, um, yes, it's about setting a purpose, it's about having goals, it's about having um, this kind of can-do kind of mentality, but also operating in you know, your kind of circles of influence kind of style, knowing what it is you can influence, what you can do about it. So I think that's really important about having that perspective when you're looking at, at resilience. Yeah. Uh, and, and also exercising self-care, looking after yourself. I think that's really important. Yeah, I mean, we talked with Lisa uh, about the concept of managing leaders, like or individuals even, you know, putting your own oxygen mask on first before you help others, you know, to be a, almost appropriately selfish, if you like, and looking after yourself so you can then affect others, be, be effective. Yeah. Uh, I, I know we love a framework in Oak Ridge. I wonder if, you, if you've got a, a framework that we could unpack that really digs a bit deeper into this? Yeah, I mean, one framework that I've been developing and working with, especially when we're looking at, you know, this kind of COVID situation and coming out of lockdown and moving into what people are calling the new normal, I don't think it is a new normal, um, is a framework what I'm calling the 4R framework. Okay. And, and the first R is very much about um, spending some time reflecting. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by reflecting is just really thinking about your experiences that you that people have been through, um, thinking about what's worked, what hasn't worked, and spending some time of deep reflection. And then that moves on to the second hour. And the second hour is about reviewing. And the aim of reviewing is about what has worked and what do you want to continue doing? What hasn't worked and do you want to change or adapt? What is it that you want to ditch completely? or what has been missing and you want to introduce. Right. So reflection helps you review. And then the, the third R is about how do we reconnect? And that reconnection is about reconnecting with our colleagues, um, reconnecting with our friends, mm. reconnecting with our market, reconnecting with our business. Mm. And I think the, the reconnecting bit is important because we have got a great opportunity now to do things differently and to do different things that are really sustainable and really add value so it's not just about you know what i'm going to go back and do everything that i did before you know if we we reflect and review we can reconnect in different ways and in stronger ways so that's the that's the third r is, okay. is reconnection and then the fourth r is about rebooting is you know we need to reboot our businesses we need to reboot the way that we do things but it's about rebooting in a way that is fit for purpose, that has got a purpose, that is, you know, forward thinking and, and optimistic. So the kind of framework that I, I, I'm trying to encourage people to think about is spend some time in deep reflection, 
think about reviewing what's working and what's not working, what's missing, you know, what you want to ditch. Think about how you, you can reconnect at a deeper level mm. and then think about how you can reboot your business. So that's where the four hour framework comes into it. Um, and it's just creating a bit of time and space for people to use that particular framework. Mm. That, that sounds fantastic, Mark. Well, we'll make sure that framework is referred to in the show notes and is on the website for anybody who wants to go and have a look at that, that framework. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I think in particular, what strikes me is uh, the reconnecting piece. I think a, a trick that uh, individuals and leaders can make is they're just assuming we're going to go back to things as they were before and people are as they were before. They've just come mm. a, a crisis point, if you want to, to, to coin a phrase. Um, so I'm just wondering, um, are there any p further personal tips, particularly whilst we're moving into this new world, which is probably, I read somewhere, Something like uh, home working is likely has gone up to about 24, 25% of the workforce at the minute in terms of uh, home working. And it's likely to stay at that level, which is up from about 10%. Mm -hmm. So any hints and tips about being resilient at home? Yeah, uh, I think always have a, a sense of purpose in what, you, what you're doing. In, and being clear about what that purpose is. And, and if you are working from home, um, it's working with your colleagues in your organization, that's sort of virtually, I guess, um, over Zoom or Teams or whatever platform you, you want to use, mm. but never lose sight of the purpose of what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and I think also um, it's about appreciating difference as well. And what I mean by appreciating difference is, you know, as well as the inclusion, diversity and equality aspect of it, is that we've all got different working patterns. Mm. And I think it's about appreciating that what works for one would not necessarily work for, for somebody else. But we've got to be very much um, outcome focused rather than input focused. So if you're working from home, never forget your purpose never forget what it is you are wanting to achieve at the end of it, but then trusting people to get on with it and achieve that in a format and in a way that, that suits them. I think that the other thing about working from home as well is being very clear where the boundaries are. Uh, and this is something that I think quite a, a lot about is working from home can be a challenge because there's an awful lot going around you and you, you hold multiple roles. You know, you may be a partner, a, parent a brother a sister a friend a carer and looking at all those things as well as as trying to work and, and sometimes you've got to be very clear about where those boundaries are between the roles so i'm a, a big fan of, of something called marking the boundaries it is putting something in place that says you know what i'm not working now i'm going into that particular role now i'm i'm very lucky to a certain extent that we, we've got a, a rather cluttered back bedroom which is doubling up as my office. I think so my office have got that, that's, that yeah. new working space at home. Yeah, but I can close a door and I can go downstairs and go to the kitchen. Um, there are those that haven't got that. They're maybe working in the corner of a bedroom or working in the corner of a kitchen or, or you know, in the living room. But try and do something that helps you shut off from that. Now, that could be something physical like drawing a curtain across or taking the desk to pieces. But even... Um, getting changed i mean I, I i tend to get changed at the end of a working day because i'm, I'm in my sort of casual gear and i'm in my, my, my semi working gear kind of thing so those are the kind of things that we've got to have a look at mark i've got a massive image in my mind of you getting uh, dressed for dinner with a black bow tie and going downstairs and in the crabtree household now uh, at the end of day at uh, the working day have you been peeking through the window, Steve? Have ah. you been having a look through the window about that? So that's exactly what I do. Um, no, but I think it, what it does, it, it does mark the boundary. Um, you know, go for a run, cook a meal, get changed, do something that just helps you have that little bit of downtime. And I think it's very much about self-care of, of exercising that. Um, I heard a great story the, the other day, actually. It was about, um, about somebody who used to cycle to work Used to, used to pack their sandwiches up and used to cycle to work. And obviously they're, they're, they're working from home. There's no need for them to do that. But they still get up on a morning and they still 
cycle to work, turn around and cycle back. Because it's, it's that kind of <clears throat> symbolism, that kind of marker that says, now I'm at work. And at the end of the day, they, they do exactly the same. So they've got this ritual before and after that, that marks out the, the boundaries of the working day. And I think that, that's really important. I think uh, we'll cover this on, a, on another podcast, I think, but the power of habits and thinking about the habits that you're doing are really important and a real contributor to resilience, I think. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, routine and habits, Steve. I think those, those are important. Is that we, we've got to, obviously, positive routines and positive habits. You know, I think they are very much um, up there from, in my mind in the sense of importance, but it helps us, we, you know, maintain a balance in our life. I think that's really important. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I, I can't... I can't remember the guy's name, but there was a, as a book come out very recently, just before lockdown, in fact, it was, it was the reflections of uh, somebody being a submariner. And he was talking right. about the importance of, you know, living in a confined space, a bit like lockdown, uh, but getting up and having routines, you know, in the morning. And they have very strict routines, includes cleaning things like getting ready, you know, putting the right uniform on, right clothes, as you said, taking the right clothes off. Yeah. That's, that's, that's fantastic. And thank you for sharing that, particularly the, the marking the boundaries idea. I think you can extend that, I think, also into the thoughts about how the teams are operating. What's our boundaries? Have we got agreed times when we're going to switch on and switch off? And, and that kind of thing as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, you know, we're all feeling our way through this new way of working. Um, and, you know, when I talk to, to leaders uh, and managers, you know, I say, you know, you, you're not measuring activity anymore. You're measuring outcomes. Yeah. You know, so as long as you're very clear about the outcomes and what you're wanting from, from people and what results, trust people to get on with it because you don't know what they're balancing, you know, in the, in the work, you know, in their homes, in their lives at this particular moment in time. So I think that, that's important as well. Mm. I was just looking at a piece of research that you actually sent through when we were talking about the, the, the podcast and thinking about it. And it was saying that uh, this piece of research, which comes from the, uh, ooh, where is it now? The uh, Institute of Leadership and Management. Yeah. yeah. The, the survey they did was saying that uh, people are actually, 44% of people are actually working longer hours than they were before. Mm -hmm. And that's a signal, I think, uh, to just check in and say, mm, is that, is that like adding to my resilience bank account or is it withdrawing on my resilience bank account? Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Very much so. Um, just, think, just thinking about that then, because um, we've been focusing more on individual resilience and what that means to us as individuals and how we can think about our resilience quotient. And we've you mentioned the hardiness uh, work uh, as well, which will perhaps touch back on as, as we go through i'm just mm -hmm. wondering if you were now sit sat here talking to one of our oak ridge supporter tribe out there and you were talking to them as a, as a team leader or a leader of an organization what would you be suggesting is really important to, to build resilient organizations resilient teams particularly as we work our way through this okay i think there's a number of things that that people need to to really focus on and i think one of the one of the most important is about purpose and values right and you know a lot of the, the research on resilience from a number of authors you know they talk about having a commitment or having a purpose and and this goes through you know a lot of stuff about motivation and a lot of stuff about empowerment and all and engagement but it's about making sure that people understand the value that they add to the organization understand the strategic narrative understand the purpose of what they do and i think it's very important that we really communicate that in a language that people understand so yep. that kind of purpose and values i think is a really important aspect of it i think also um it's about making sure that people feel supported and people have got time and space to communicate Okay. And, and resilience, um, again, talks about connections and support. So, you know, either virtually or physically, it's giving people time and space to connect and talk and share and reflect. And I think that's especially important now where people may be venturing back into the workplace or the world of work. And, you know, people will have so many different experiences, some positive, some not so positive we need to give people that space and time to, to connect and support each other. Mm. So it's very much about purpose and about connection. 
I think also um, there is this, this idea of helping people be the best versions of themselves they can be. Okay, say a bit so, more. Well, I think, you know, we, we talked about the, you know, the uh, if, if you are going to help somebody be resilient, yes, you've got to look after yourself, but you've got to help them think about what they can do for themselves to build that. So it is about marking the boundaries. It is about helping them look at things from a different perspective. Um, and also, I think it's about helping them realize that, you know, they are really resilient individuals and they have been through change and transformation before. They probably just haven't recognized it or realized it before. And I think it's just getting them to think about that and think about the strengths that they bring as well. And I think it's very much a, a manager's or leader's responsibility to, to help people understand the strengths that they've got by having those kind of conversations. And, and I think also um, it, it's, it's about making sure that people are looking after themselves physically, mentally, and, and putting those kind of things in place. I think that's really important. Yeah, no, I, th I agree. And I'm thinking as well, as you were talking there, just building on your four R's, um, that one of the things about um, getting people to reflect on their own experience and is to reframe that experience. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And that uh, of reframing, I think, is really a, a key one. Yeah, I, I have a, I know we like frameworks. I have another framework that, that helps people use that, if that could we be. Love a, we love a framework, Mark. I know you love a framework. Um, so this is a framework that, you know, has been adapted and uh, it's called Oscar. Oscar. Um, Oscar. Oscar, but yeah, but O-S-K-A-A-R. O-S-K-A-A-R, okay. Yeah, Oscar. So, so I think, you know, when we're looking at resilience and we're looking at change and, and transformation, I think the, the, the first thing is, is how people gain a perspective. So the O stands for outcome. And, you know, it's about helping people picture themselves coming through the change and trans, transformation in the best possible shape they can be. And get them to think about, you know, what would they look like? What would they feel like? What would they experience? So let's have that real positive perspective at the, at the end of this kind of change transition kind of scenario. It's then getting people to think about, you know, where are they now compared to this picture of the future? So the S stands for scaling. So okay. thinking of yourself on a scale of one to 10, where one is I've still got some distance to go, where 10 is I'm there, is where are you now compared to this picture of yourself being a better person at the end of the transition? The K stands for know-how. Okay. Is, and, and I think that the know-how is what positive steps are you taking already to look after yourself? And at the beginning of our conversation, you, you asked me what gets me out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's about asking that similar kind of question is about what is getting that individual out of bed in the morning? What is getting them you know, motivated? What, is, what are they doing to keep their morale up? Even if it's a small thing, and what more could they do? So it's getting them to celebrate the small steps that they're, they're doing. Yep. So you've got outcome, you've got scaling, and you've got know-how. Yes. The, the first day, sorry? What are the A's about then? <clears throat> so the A is about affirm, is affirming. So affirming is celebrate what's working for you. Give yourself a pat on the back. And, and again, I think this is really important, is that we, we tend to focus on the things that we haven't done rather than the things that we have done. Got it. And I think we need to, to celebrate the small stuff. Yep. So think about the things that you've done really well, the things that you're proud of, the things that you've achieved at the end of the day. So yep. the, the first day is about affirming. The, the second day is about action. Yep. And that action is to say, okay, if you go back to the scaling part, where are you on that one to 10 scale? What could you do more of or what do you need to do less of to move yourself up step by step, notch by notch on that scale? Got so it. come up with some meaningful actions. Yep. And then the R is, is about reviewing and about how and when will you measure your progress? What milestones can you put along the way? Fantastic. So when you're looking, 
when you're looking at sort of um, resilience, it's about outcome scaling, know-how, affirming the positive things, thinking about actions and thinking about review. Those are the kind of things that I think are really important. Mm. And what strikes me there, uh, Mark, is you can use that at an individual level. Because a team could also do that as well. They could use that in a team review. So what's our, out, you know, our outcomes? Where are we on a scale of where we are? What's our, our know-how? Uh, let's affirm what we have achieved through COVID because, blimey, we've done amazing things here. Absolutely. Let's pat yeah. on the back for staying alive and keeping going, so to speak. Then it's like, okay, so what? What, what actions can we take? And then, then it almost leaps you back to your, for the last of your four R's, which is what we're going to do to reboot ourselves now we, now we work our way through. Uh, Absolutely. And that constant, I guess, occasionally, it's, I, I call it the heads up moment. You know, we're burring along doing good stuff. We need to take our heads up and just review where we are in orientation to the landscape but also a review of where we come from and where we want to get to. So it sounds brilliant from a team perspective as well, Mark. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think it, it's about taking that kind of perspective and having that kind of view of it. Now, you know, I've used this kind of Oscar framework with individuals and with teams. I've also used it retrospectively as well. And what I mean by that is getting people to think through a transition or change that may have happened in their life. Mm. So, you know, uh, I was talking to somebody before lockdown who was made redundant and they thought it was the worst thing that could have happened. You know, it was a job that they loved and, you know, they felt cut adrift. But when we, we use the framework like Oscar, they realized that they'd come through this and they were in a better shape now than they were before. But we don't necessarily realize how resilient we really are as individuals. And, and I think it's just helping people identify that and celebrate that as well. I think that's really important. Yeah, I think there's some hidden, we've all got kind of like hidden powers for one of a better phrase. And it's not that the way it isn't going into the land of woo-woo and magic. This is basically saying there's, we've got more reserves than we think we can. I think these special forces would always say, when you think you're about to fall over, you're only at 40%, you know, you've still yeah. got more you can give. To, to 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 move move on and and keep, and keep going because mm -hmm. like, there's an element of uh, resilience which is about staying in the race endurance almost you know that that thing i i think john Harvey jones said what's the secret for you of your success and he said something like john Harvey jones was a famous leader from way back for those uh, younger listeners remember him uh, well yes um and he said uh being the last man standing was one of his secrets of success just staying in the race yeah yeah and i think uh, as we think about resilience and organization resilience right now it's about staying in the race it's not about winning the game it's, but it's about staying in the race and uh, because you know i'm thinking about simon sinek stuff here the infinite game it's not about winning it's about con being able to continue you know and sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down and that's okay. But if you're resilient as an organization, as a team, and as an individual, you'll be able to stay in the race, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, it, it takes this, um, going back to this kind of 4R approach, you know, you do need to reflect and review about what you've learned and what your journey has been so far. Mm. Because you might need to change course. You may need to reconnect in a different way, and you may need just to change, change direction. But it's, it's about helping people have that time to think and reflect and to celebrate, you know, what strengths they've got and to celebrate, you know, what tricks they do really have hidden up their sleeves. Mm. Um, I think that, that reminds me of a, another book I read very, very recently uh, by a guy called John Hudson, who is the UK's military chief escape and evasion survival expert. So he trains all the pilots, those kind of guys in what to do when they, when they crash and survive. And one of his uh, watchwords is, the biggest single survival tool, people ask me what's the most important survival tool you can take with you, and he says the biggest single, most important survival tool is a well-stocked brain. You know, that's the thing. I like that. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a component, I think, of resilience here. Yeah, definitely. I think it, it definitely is. And I, th and I think it's, but it's about understanding how well-stocked your brain actually is. You know, and, and I think, you know, we, we do take an awful lot for granted in a sense that we, 
we don't really realize the kind of journeys that we've been through that have brought us to this moment now and you know and how we've grown and how it's part of us and how we are you know real warriors and battlers and survivors i think and i think that, that that's really important yeah absolutely um mark we've been having a great conversation and it's probably t time to start sort of just drawing some conclusions together here uh, yeah. i've i've I could talk for another hour with you quite easily. <laughs> really. um, but I'm thinking is um, right here, right now, very, very practically, if you're thinking at a personal level, if you're thinking about uh, being a team leader, perhaps, or even if you're thinking about, you know, leading or shaping an organization for the future, what might be your one tip for each of those three groups right here, right now, as we work our way through this virtual COVID slash changing world? Okay. I, I think it's, it's very much about um, making sure that people see there is a sense of purpose, there's a sense of value, um, mm -hmm. giving people that sense of commitment. I think that that's really, really important. Um, I think it's also about giving people the opportunity to connect and support each other and giving space to be able to do that and time to be able to do that. Yep. Um, I think it's also helping people look at things from a, a different perspective uh, as well you know we talked about inner coaches and, and it's, it's thinking about rewriting that narrative and taking a different kind of perspective yeah so that, um, the reframing thing is that the... yeah yeah very much about the reframing thing and looking in, in that kind of way perfect and and i think it's also um about listening to individual stories and helping people to unpick that and i guess challenging them to think of things in a positive way to celebrate the things that they've done rather than the things that they haven't done. Yeah. yeah accentuate, accentuate the positive. I, I think, I think that, that's really, really important. That sounds like a cue for a Bing Crosby song. I think it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's one thing that um, I was going to mention earlier on is uh, I, I know there's the Roffey Park have been developing this resilience capability index. Yes. And, and I, I think it's a really useful tool. Um, that you can actually have a look at and it can give you um, I guess it's just a snapshot a lot of these things you know depend on how honest and open you are when you when you exercise these, these tools but I do think it helps point the way into developing resilience because it is about purpose and values it is about connections and support and it's also about looking after yourself you've got to look after yourself as well yeah and I think that's really important yeah, and that reminds me, actually, a big shout out to Mark Blanchard and Joe Clare, two of our other colleagues who are working with another another client. And they've developed uh, a whole series of online uh, and modules, uh, workbooks and um, webinars. And one of them is absolutely about resilience. And they use the Ruffy Park uh, Capability Index as part of that. So big yeah. shout out to those guys. Um, one of the things I know about you, and the listeners might not know, is you are a poet in residence, Mark. You keep us entertained by publishing, uh, you know, ditties about the whole lockdown experience on our WhatsApp group that keeps us connected. Um, have you got any re any poets in poems in your um, your bag around resilience? Well, um, I wrote one this morning um, prior to this particular um, conversation about resilience. I like a man who's and, does preparation. Yeah, um, I need to put it on my uh, my, my website. Um, I've got a, a Facebook page called Poetry in Isolation where I tend to post these things. Um, but would you like me to read it? It's a bit rough and ready, but would you like me to read it? I'd love you to read it, Mark, please. Okay, it's called, I've just called it Resilience. As we slowly emerge from hibernation, get used to feelings of liberation, take tentative steps in this new day, Please walk slowly, feel your way. Do not rush head on as if nothing has changed. Reconnecting with tribes feel so long estranged. But remember you're tougher than you actually believe. You've so many tricks hidden up your sleeve. You have probably passed this way before or been washed up on a rocky shore. But look how you've blossomed, how strong you've grown. How the house of change has become your home. How you've met each challenge from head on, changing songs of woe to your victory song. How you've wrestled and then gained control with pillars of confidence running through your soul. How you've used what was once 
you thought was surplus to drive you forward with a sense of purpose. Wow, that, that, that was brilliant. Really, really, really cool, Mark. Thank you very much for that. You're very welcome. And that's an added bonus, you know, bonus feature for this particular. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We always like to, you know, we have this spirit of abundance as part of our values in, in Oak Ridge. Um, so I'm just wondering, have you got any recommendations for either a, a book uh, or a website that you go to or another podcast that you'd recommend? Uh, just to leave that with, uh, with our listeners as well. Yeah, um, I've got two actually. And, and one is, uh, is something that you may have come across or met. It's a guy called Paul McGee. Oh, yes. The sumo guy. The sumo guy, yeah. So, so one of his the, the the sumo book I think is a is a, a real you know easy to read pick up book. Shut up and move on. Mm -hmm. And and um, I'm lucky enough to have met Paul a couple of times. Just and I know he I know he does um, some great podcasts as well, which is about taking a different perspective mm -hmm. and, and really thinking things through and and taking some time to reflect. So, in terms of one area, is the sumo guy I think is a is a good one. Um, the, the other one is, uh, I'm going to sort of uh, pre-advertise something as well, is that I've, I've been lucky enough, I'm, I'm, I'm currently co-writing a book with this next author, who's uh, Professor Julie Hodges from Durham Business School. And we're just coming to the end of, of writing a book on HR and transformational change. That's but it. one of, of Julie's books that I find really useful um, is called Managing and Leading People Through Organisational Change. Sounds on. In practice of sustaining change through people. Mm. And, and what I like about this is, you know, it, it's a bit like a, a manual of best practice. It's very easy to, to pick up and dip in and dip out of because it looks at things like, you know, um, how, do you, how do emotions work at work? Um, how do you have the challenging and difficult conversations? How do you identify resilience and how do you identify resistance? So, Managing and leading people through organisational change is a, is a good little book to, to have a look at. And I've, I've delved into this on a, on a number of occasions. So those are things that I think are, are really important. That's a fantastic share. Thanks, Mark. Um, You're welcome. Make sure everything that we've talked about is in the show notes, and, but also the, the clear guidance uh, where to find it on, on the website as well. Yeah. So, Mark, I've got to say thank you so much. Um, as I said, You're welcome. I could have listened to you for and had a good conversation with you about this really important topic about resilience, change, and navigating our way through COVID. So that's been fantastic. So, um, folks, I'd just like to say thanks for listening to this episode with me and Mark, which is all about how do you build resilience when undergoing significant change at work and at home. So on behalf of the Oak Ridge team, we hope you enjoyed our space for conversation and found it practical and informative. We'd love to start a conversation with you to see how consultants like Mark can help you with you and your business grow and thrive. The best way to get a hold of us is via our email at info at oakridgecentre.co.uk and Natalie Griffiths, our business office manager, will get one of us to contact you. Uh, you can also contact us via Twitter, which is our handle, I think that's the right phrase, is Oak Ridge Consult, or look, up, look us up on our website, which is www.oakridgecentre.co.uk. That's www.oakridgecentre.co.uk. If you fancy giving this show a kind review wherever possible, we'd be really grateful. And if you'd like to share the show with someone you think would like it, We'd also be incredibly grateful. Please don't forget to subscribe. As ever, we'd be delighted to hear from you, what you think, and take suggestions of other how do I questions you might have that we could feature in future series. Thanks for listening. We do appreciate it. And we do hope you'll join us again next time on Virtual Connections Space for Conversations, where I'll be talking to another one of my colleagues about a topic that you told us is important to you in helping your business navigate the ever fasting changing landscape. To all of us here at Oak Ridge, stay safe.